Hey, what's up, guys? This is Jag again with the JB Podcast. So, as you guys may have heard, the first, like, big trade happened of the trade season, I guess, of the NBA so far. And it's that Kyle Korver is going to the Cleveland Cavaliers for basically nothing. Uh... For Mo Williams, who's retired, so it's basically just a salary dump opening up a roster spot. For Mike Dunleavy, who wasn't doing anything in Cleveland this year anyway. He just wasn't fitting into the system and wasn't playing very good. And Atlanta's probably going to move him somewhere else, too. I'm guessing probably to um, Philadelphia, because they need veteran leadership and more floor spacers. And then a protected 2019 first-round pick, which I'll talk more about what I think of Atlanta's trade, but for now I'm just going to focus on Kyle Korver and what he can bring to the Cavs. So honestly, I see a lot of people saying he, the Cavs are basically a shoe-in to win the title again, and it's just over. Every other team lost their hopes. I mean, which is understandable when you get one of the greatest shooters in history. I mean, about seven years ago, eight years ago, I want to say, he had the greatest three-point shooting season in history in terms of percentage, over 53%. So, I mean, this is one of the greatest shooters ever, eighth all-time in uh, made three-pointers, and he's shooting 41% this year in general on threes, And on wide open ones, he's shooting 49.6%. So, and if you know LeBron and Kyrie, he's going to get a lot more open threes. So, I mean, he needed to do a lot more work actually in, in, uh, Atlanta and all of his other teams because he was sprinting off of screens all the time, which is good, you know, like I have no fault in him doing that, but it's going to just be a lot easier for him now in Cleveland. Now, here's my thing. Corver can bring a lot to the table, especially as coming off the bench once JR comes back. And I think Liggins is going to be starting anyway. But um, he can bring a lot to the table, no lie. But the thing is, it's his deficiency. The man is going to be 36 this March, so he'll be 36 in the playoffs and the postseason and the finals and how many ever years he decides to stay because he is a free agent after the end of this year. And then he's never been a great defender, but he's been a really good team defender. So within the team's defensive scheme, he's been great at rotating and keeping up with his man. But like ISOs, he's going to get killed. So LeBron's probably going to have to switch over if someone starts ISOing on him or Liggins or Shumpert or something like that. Or even JR. I mean, he's a lot better defender now, too. But, um, so defense is a problem. A little problem, I guess you could say. And then also, uh, the Cavs, they've specifically needed from the offseason, they lost Del Vadova and they just lost Chris Anderson, who's really old anyway, wasn't bringing a lot to the table. But, um, so they need a backup point guard really badly. And they need a backup big man, and actually big man, because uh, Tristan Thompson is only 6'9", 6'10", on a good day. You know, and he's a beast on the boards, no lie. Excuse me. He's as physical as it gets, but that doesn't make up for... I mean, with the Warriors, it'll match up well, because he can go out and defend anybody. But against other teams, like... If Toronto ends up getting Millsap, I mean, and if Atlanta didn't basically just give up on the season, who's dealing with Dwight, you know, in the playoffs? Who's dealing with Greg Monroe in the on the Milwaukee Bucks? Who's dealing with Andre Drummond if they are lucky enough to make the playoffs, you know? So I'd say they just need another big man and actually big, strong. I mean, that was a... That was what Mozgov was bringing to the table two years ago. And then when they decided to go small all the time, Mozgov kind of fell out of the rotation. But he was a huge body, seven feet tall, and they traded two first-round picks for him. So, yeah, they need a big man. And 
A few names I could throw out there are Tyson Chandler. He is making $14 million this year, though, and the Cavs have a $9.6 million trade exception. So unless they want to go even deeper into the luxury tax, I don't know if they're going to go for a, a veteran that's making that much money and has a lot less impact than his defense player of the year days. But still, I mean, he's a great defender. And I'm not sure who else is really on the market right now in terms of big men, but David Griffin is a genius. He does his job amazing, so I trust him to figure it out. And if you're a Cavs fan, you just got to trust him as well. And then backup point guard. And this one is a little bit more open for interpretation. So one Rondo. We know he's not staying with the Bulls long term. I mean he fell out of the rotation and he's basically just being benched right now like for the entire game even if they're winning i mean they're not they don't get a lot of blowouts granted but even then fred hoiberg said you're going to be benched i mean we're going with michael carter williams which is probably the smarter decision anyway carter williams is younger a uh, better shooter somewhat i mean neither of them are amazing shooters and like he doesn't have the attitude problems that rondo does but rondo could maybe fit in with the Cavs as a backup PG because he would be able to run the show a little bit more with the second string. Uh, it would give LeBron more rest so he doesn't have to play backup PG while Kyrie is sitting, which, I mean, he's fantastic at it, but, you know, it wears on you to have to do everything all the time. And um, he's not a good shooter, but with the Cavs shooting, I mean, he could pass all day to any of them. He's still one of the best passers in the whole league, you know. So that's one option. And then you got um, Mario Chalmers, who is probably going to be signed within the next two weeks, I'm guessing. The only pro And he was great with LeBron. I mean, there's those memes and videos of LeBron and the big three screaming at him all the time. But um, he actually played his role really well. He was a pretty good three-point shooter. Uh, he, he didn't really control the offense, I want to say, but he did his job, you know. And um, that would be a great pickup. The only problem is he is coming off an Achilles tear, which is known as a career ender, you know. But he is young, so he might be able to get through it more. And supposedly he's almost back from rehabbing it. So who knows? There's Norris Cole is another option, another former LeBron teammate. And honestly, I wouldn't want Cole. He doesn't run offenses very well. He's not the most efficient player in the world, and he doesn't have a very high basketball IQ to fit in with a championship contender. I mean, when he won those two titles with Miami, he was a rookie and a sophomore a year in the NBA, and he wasn't really doing much. I mean, the second time around, he was doing a little bit more off the bench, but the first playoffs, he didn't really do much. So I don't know if I would go with him. I mean, if you get cut by a team that's drastically needed a point guard like the Pelicans did, and they were not doing very well record-wise, and you still get cut by them, I don't know what to say. You know, I mean, LeBron makes people better, but I don't know how much better you can make Norris Cole, let's be honest. <laughs> so um, another option is Jared Jack. Jared Jack, which is a former Cavs teammate, uh, with Kyrie Irving just three years ago and he actually retired and he's supposedly making an NBA comeback which again you worry is the rust you know uh, apparently Baron Davis is in the process of making a comeback as well but rust and he's even older so I don't know if you take the risks on them and um here's there's one option I was thinking about and it's also another Suns player like Tyson Chandler is but they, the Cavs have the $9.6 million trade exception, and they're most likely looking to move Jordan McRae. He doesn't fit in with the Cavs' offense, unless it's a blowout, and then he can just go out and shoot as many times as he wants, you know. So if they somehow can get the trade exception and Jordan McRae and maybe some other bench player. I mean, James Jones is probably never leaving, but, I mean, that is a contract you could always give up, you know what I mean? So, and I was thinking you could flip that for Brandon Knight, who has fallen out of the rotation. I mean, he still gets playing time, but not nearly 
having the impact that he did have on Phoenix last year and the year before. And he's probably looking to move for his own personal reasons. And Phoenix, guard heavy. They're probably looking to move on past him as well. And that will just uh, take away $12 million in cap space that next year with even more free agents, maybe they can entice a veteran to help lift them to the playoffs. Because Eric Bledsoe and Devin Booker, great players, but they're just not getting it done right now. And that's pretty much it. I mean, there are some other point guards out there that could possibly be in a trade or a free agency, but they're not huge names. And I don't know how big of an impact they would have on the Cavs, honestly. So I'll just leave it right there for the episode. And um, just let me know, what do you guys think about this Kyle Korver trade? Does it actually make them uh, favorites now to win the title over Golden State? Uh I personally don't think it does. I personally, honestly, don't even think it has that big of an impact on the Cavs in general. I mean, it mostly just widens their uh, stronghold and the gap between them and uh, Toronto in the East. So that's basically all it does, but I don't know how much better it makes them compared to Golden State or any other uh, Western Conference contender, but let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think it's a wrap? And then also, who do you think could fill the Cavs' holes to actually get their roster complete and hopefully go for that repeat? And yeah, that's all I have for you guys. Please like, subscribe, uh, comment down below who you think. Hit me up on Twitter, anything. Just let me know how I can be better and better with my delivery and everything. And I'll see you guys next time.